Hi, I'm Melissa Muir. Welcome back. In this video, I want to show you guys a new fun tool in my studio. Not really a tool, but it's something that's going to allow me to get a lot of work done. And it is a jeweler's bench. Now this bench is made by Durston, and you can see here I've got the parts all laid out. So we have our bench top, and this is essentially how it comes shipped. So I've got the whole bench top, I have my two legs, plus the back support. And what I'm going to do is show you guys what to look for in a good bench. Now this is an exciting venture because I am partnering up with Durston and we are going to be building a jewelry studio together. We're starting with the bench and we'll talk about some of the things that you should look for in a bench, but then we're also going to go a little further. We'll talk about seating, lighting, other storage options that you might have and things to kind of consider. Then once we have our bench set up, we are going to then start adding in various tools. So it's going to be a very fun series, a fun partnership, and I'm glad to have you guys with me as we go along. So I'm going to put this on a time lapse to show you guys how easy it is to assemble this bench, and then we'll get ready for the rest of the series. So as you can see, it doesn't take very much to put it together. It's actually very, very simple. There's very few parts that you have to do. So let me show you a few of my favorite things on this bench that I really like. First and foremost, you have a hardwood surface. All of the actual wood parts are going to be a hardwood. In this case, I believe it's maple. It comes with an accessory tray, which you don't have to put on, but this is going to be really good for you to stick either pliers or drill bits or you know different things on this tray. You can also clamp your light, whatever. Then my favorite part, I have to say, are the different drawers. So you have three different drawers, and while that's not different in and of itself, it does have rollers, and I like that it has the guides. That does kind of prevent you from pulling out the drawer a little too far, which can actually be a good thing, but it does make it so that it doesn't pull out as far as maybe some of the others that you might be used to seeing. So again, it does have the rollers, which is going to hold this into place. You can actually hold quite a bit in here. It is going to take a lot of weight. So if you have heavier things like your draw plates or whatever else that you might store in that. Now down here for your catch tray, Again, I really like the fact that there is not a lot of clearance between the top rail of this and then our rail for our additional tray in here. And the reason I like that is because when I pull this out, I can come out quite a ways and it's not going to just fall out onto my lap like some other benches that I've had the experience with. Now, another thing I really like, this actually has a grooved rail in here for our accessory tray. And this is where I'm going to put things like maybe my ball vise, my files, some sanding sticks, 
and maybe other little burrs or whatever else, and you can move it in and out of your way. You also have the bench pin that's included. Quite honestly, I'm not going to be using this. I will attach on here my GRS back plate, and that is going to allow me to use my GRS uh, Benchmate system, and then other accessories that are compatible with that. So I would pull this out, mount this right here on top of that, but you do have a bench pin that comes with this. You also have two holes here, and this is going to be great for putting the end or the front end of your mandrels into this if you're working on rings. Another thing you have are some armrests. So this is handy for me when I'm going into setting stones, if I'm burnishing or polishing. It gives me a place to rest my arm and stabilize things while I do some of that more meticulous work. Another thing that you have here is you've got this higher rail that goes all the way around your bench and that's going to prevent things from uh, rolling off or sliding off or accidentally being knocked off. Because you know that never happens on a jeweler's bench. <laughs> So from floor to the top of my bench here is about 36 and a half, 37 inches. And then as far as my width goes without my little side tray here, it's about 37 and a half inches. So that gives you kind of a rough idea of what space we're looking at for your footprint. I hope you guys like this. I hope you guys enjoy seeing this new feature that we've got going on. I'm very excited to share a lot of these with you and we will see you guys in the next part of the series.